Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with an update on the current situation here in Spain. And Spain has announced that it will no longer be necessary to wear masks outdoors as of the 26th of June. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation. You can see your name here. Thanks to people that bought merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I just said, the Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez last Friday made it official that face masks will no longer be necessary outdoors as of next Saturday, the 26th of June. As we can see here on Saturday next week, the 26th of June, face masks will at last cease to be compulsory outdoors, leaving behind long months of having to wear a face mask at all times, in all places and under all circumstances when crossing the threshold of the home, even though the measure has proved to be of little use in combating the coronavirus. As with almost all good news related to COVID-19, from the end of the strict containment to the arrival of the main shipments of the vaccines, it was delivered by Pedro Sanchez. We are getting closer to normality every day, said the president of the government in Barcelona, making making it clear that this is no longer the so-called new normal, but a clear move towards a return to pre-pandemic life. So next Saturday, the 26th of June, is the day that we can finally walk around outdoors without a face mask on. Spain has decided that it's time to follow other European countries, for example France, and drop this outdoor face mask rule. And as always, Pedro Sanchez was the conveyor of that good news. You don't really see the Prime Minister here in Spain talking too much about bad news. He normally delegates that to other ministers. But when it comes to good and popular news, like this, he's the one that greets the cameras. But it seems that the population is split when it comes to this new rule. Some people are ecstatic that they're no longer going to have to wear a mask, but other people seem to be a bit more cautious. As we can see here, a summer without masks in the open air, between the joy of seeing each other's faces again and the wariness of those who have not been vaccinated. High temperatures, sweat and face masks. One of those three will soon disappear this summer in Spain. Face masks will no longer be compulsory outdoors from June the 26th. Just after a year, they were made compulsory nationwide because of the coronavirus pandemic. I think it's a good idea that outdoors you will no longer have to wear a mask. One passerby commented to the TV e microphones. I'm not going to take off my mask outdoor or indoors, said another. So some people happy, but others still a little bit wary. And in my opinion, I think it's the right decision, especially if you're walking around outdoors and there aren't many people around, especially with the stifling temperatures that we can have at this time of the year. But if you're outdoors in a place that's crowded and social distancing can't be maintained, probably better to keep it on. Now, given the fact that we have been wearing a face mask here in Spain, both indoors and outdoors for such a long time now, some people have become very accustomed to having half of their face covered. And believe it or not, some people actually like it. And the fact that soon we will no longer have to wear a mask is causing stress for some. As we can see from this headline, the empty face syndrome, the stress of those who don't want to remove their masks for health or aesthetics. Experts colloquially call it the empty face syndrome. It's not in the manuals or diagnosed in the books of mental disorders, but it's out there. It's what it feels like to be without a face mask after more than a year. Stress leaves its mark. Now you have to reconnect with your facial features, explains Jose Antonio Galliani, psychologist at the Centro Psicosanitario Galliani to News. Reconnecting after such a long time after breaking the invisible border that inevitably appears when we wear a mask, explains coach Gemma Ramirez. After months without seeing each other's faces, we experience a new sensation that, for many, can generate stress and anxiety. Experts even talk about agoraphobia, the fear of open spaces, but now applied to going without masks. So the empty face syndrome, now a problem for some, as apparently some people prefer to keep their facial features hidden behind a mask. Now, as we all know, Spain has been one of the hardest hit countries by the coronavirus pandemic, especially when it comes to deaths. And as we can see here, Spain records 493,000 deaths in 2020, the highest number since the Civil War. The coronavirus pandemic has caused the greatest demographic crisis in Spain since the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 1939. According to provisional data published on Thursday by the National Statistics Institute, 492,930 people died in Spain in 2020 when the country was deep in the grips of the health crisis. This is the highest number since the historical record began in 1941 two years after the end of the Civil War. In total, 74,227 more deaths were recorded in 2020 than in 2019, a rise of 17.73%. 
Last year also saw the lowest number of births on record. A total of 339,206 children were born in 2020, 21,411 fewer than the previous year. This is the biggest drop recorded since 2013. So 74,227 more deaths in Spain in 2020 than in the previous year, 2019. And for all those people out there that think that COVID-19 is nothing more than a flu, it's time to wake up. As not since during the Spanish Civil War back in the 1930s, have more deaths been recorded annually. Now some good news for people here in Spain living in the autonomous community of Galicia and it is that town festivals are back. As we can see here, town festivals returned to Galicia after more than a year banned due to the coronavirus. Summer is not the same without a festival, especially in Galicia. The community of a thousand patron saint festivals in the month of August alone has set out to recover normality in the festival fields of each of its towns. For this, on Saturday night, a series of pilot tests have been launched in six different locations to draw the roadmap for coming months. In Noya, a Coruña, some 800 people gathered on a 3,000 square meter esplanade near the port. There are 165 plots of 12 square meters with a maximum capacity of four people each. So people in Galicia no doubt happy with that news because what is a Galician town without its town festival? Now the controversial AstraZeneca vaccine is back in the headlines today and it seems that the European Union will finally get its hands on those doses of AstraZeneca that weren't delivered. As we can see from this headline, court forces AstraZeneca to deliver 50 million doses to the EU by September but fewer than required. The Brussels Court of First Instance has ordered AstraZeneca to deliver 50 million doses of coronavirus vaccine to the European Union by the 27th of September 2021. The Belgian court has established the following timetable for the distribution of the vaccines according to the ruling to which RTVE has had access. 15 million doses by the 26th of July, 20 million doses by the 23rd of August and 15 million doses by the 27th of September. So the AstraZeneca vaccine shortage that we have here in Spain and other European countries looks like it's finally coming to an end. Now on the topic of vaccinations, one part of Spain is now 100% immune to COVID-19 and it is the island of La Gracia in the Canary Islands. While Spain as a whole will still have to wait months, the inhabitants of the small Canary Island of La Graciosa will be the first to know what it is like to be 100% immunized against COVID-19. The entire population over the age of 16 is expected to be fully vaccinated by the 4th of July. At the moment, the so-called Eighth Island, which is dependent on Lanzarote in terms of health, has all of its population over the age of 30 immunized with the full vaccination schedule. Last week it received official authorization to begin inoculation of all residents over the age of 16, all of whom have already received an injection. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence rate for the last 14 days now sits at 95.9. There are still 2,856 people hospitalized around the country with COVID and there are currently 793 COVID patients in ICU. When it comes to the vaccination campaign, we can see that just under 30% of the population have completed vaccination and almost 48% of the population have received at least one dose. Now some more good news here in Spain, this time related to the economy, and it is that Spain's economy finally takes off after the pandemic. It has taken a year, but the economic recovery is finally underway. The success of vaccines and income protection policies mean that the exit from the crisis is likely to be very rapid. What the most recent indicators show is an intense recovery in the Spanish economy from May onwards, which should accelerate in the coming months if we take into account what is happening in the countries with the most advanced vaccination processes. In May, almost 300,000 workers joined the labor force, adding new affiliations to the social security scheme and workers who left the ERTE or furlough scheme. This is a historic figure for a month of May and clearly shows shows how the end of the restrictions meant an immediate acceleration of the economy. So full speed ahead for the Spanish economy and some 300,000 workers getting back into their jobs after being in that temporary layoff scheme for the last 18 months. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Terry, great content as always and I do love your put downs too. Cricket is for losers, almost made me spill my coffee as I was laughing so much. Thanks for providing such detailed and interesting reports. Espero que en el futuro pueda volver a pasar tiempo en España de nuevo. Voy a seguir viendo tus videos porque me ayudan mucho a entender un poco más 
sobre la vida real ahí. Yeah, Terry, thanks for the comment and good use of the subjunctive. Y espero que tengas un buen día. Good to see that you like the content and that you have the occasional chuckle when I reply to some of the comments. And also good to see you there using Spanish and a very good level of Spanish too. So let's hope you can get down to Spain soon and perfect it even more. One here from Tony. Hi, Stuart. How long did it take you to drive from Madrid to Benidorm? Enjoy your stay. Tony. Yeah, Tony, thanks for the comment. It's about four hours from where I am here in Madrid. I'm about 17 kilometers southeast from the center of the city, just off the Valencia Highway. So I just take that highway straight down for about 200 kilometers, then it splits. One side goes off to Valencia, the other side goes off to Alicante. So around 400 k's, I think, in about four hours. We left on Thursday around 2 p.m., had a fairly traffic-free experience, and then came back yesterday, leaving Benidorm at about 5.30 p.m., and there were no cars on the road, and we got here about 9.30 p.m. And what a pleasure it is to drive on the motorways here in Spain without cars. One here from Sophie. Hi, Stuart. I'm flying from the north to the south of Spain this summer. Do you know what kind of requirements, documents are needed at the moment relating to COVID at the airport for flying within the country? Yes, yeah, Sophie, thanks for the comment. As far as I know, when you travel around mainland Spain, whether it be by plane or bus, you don't need any type of documentation. Of course, you need to have some type of identification on you at all times here in Spain, but that's not because of COVID. That's just the general law of the country. But there are no special COVID-related documents needed if you travel, for example, from Malaga in the south to Bilbao in the north. It's a different story if you go to the Balearics, for example, I think they require a negative PCR test, and that might also be the case for the Canary Islands, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So apart from your ID and your ticket, at the moment, the travel here on mainland Spain, nothing else necessary. One here from Mairead, can I ask what is needed from Ireland to enter Spain in July? Yeah, Mairead, thanks for the comment. I think the main requirement for people coming to Spain from other EU countries is that you need to have that digital green certificate, and in that certificate, it's going to show the relative health data, whether you have been vaccinated, whether you have had a negative PCR test, if you have had COVID and how long ago. And I think you also need to fill out an online government form. So that's what you currently need, I believe, to get into Spain from another EU country. So have a good trip. One here from Alan seems that Spain is putting tourism over its main concern, health. With the worsening situation in the UK and the fact that Germany and Italy have stopped UK tourists, surely Spain should at least insist on tests before allowing people in. It could all backfire horrendously. Yeah, thanks for the comment, Alan. And you're right, it does appear that Spain is prioritizing tourism over health. And like you, given the worsening of the health situation in the UK, I'm also surprised that the Spanish government hasn't revised the criteria to enter the country from the UK. As you said, Germany's done it, Italy's done it, but Spain has not. And as we can see with what is happening in Portugal at the moment, things can change very, very quickly. So I don't know whether or not Spain is considering revising those conditions to enter the country from the UK, but it would probably be a good idea. And finally, one here from Anthony. Hi, new to your channel, but love what you have to say bring my young family over from the UK to Benidorm in four weeks, as I do every year. Love the place. Thank you for all the information. If you believe the British press, Benidorm is dead. Yeah, Anthony, thanks for the comment. Welcome to the channel and glad you like the content. As everybody knows, I was recently in Benidorm and I can confirm that Benidorm is not dead, especially at the weekends. Have a look at these images. <laughs> However, there is a part of Benidorm which is very, very quiet, and it is the British part of Benidorm, an absolute ghost town. Only a handful of places open there, and some bars and restaurants seem to have closed for good. But the center part of Benidorm was very, very busy on Friday and Saturday, and some of the beaches were also very busy. I saw people queuing up to go to restaurants on Friday evening at some of the more popular places there, but some of the British bars and restaurants that were open, or at least the ones that I saw, were very, very quiet indeed. So British Benidorm is pretty dead, unfortunately, but Spanish Benidorm is alive and kicking. On that note, I'll start to wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.